Kusanyika mbele zako uishie milele Wewe mungu mwenye nguvu na wewe mweza yote Asante kwa sababu unatuwezesha Ata yale nguvu zetu haziwezi Tunakuwa budu maana wewe umekuwa muaminifu Mpaka mahali tumefika Tumeona nguvu zako Tumeona ukuu wako na uweza wako katika maisha yetu Asante kwa nafasi ingine ambayo umetupatia tuje mbele zako na ili tukaliite jina lako na ili Bwana tukasimame mbele zako na Bwana ukatende mambo ambayo mwanadamu hawezi kutenda tunajua nguvu za Bwana zinashuka nguvu za Bwana zinatenda miujiza nguvu za Bwana zinafungua milango zinaponya wagonjwa zinainua wale walioshushwa chini na Bwana zinatenda maajabu asante kwa yale unatutendea hata sasa jidhihirishe kwa ukuu jidhihirishe kwa nguvu na uweza wewe ni Bwana tubariki hata tunapolisi kia neno lako uzungumze na nafsi zetu nasi bwana tutabarikiwa na tutapona ni asante kwa maana utatutendea katika jina la Yesu tunaomba na tunaamini let's give the lord a mighty clap hallelujah somebody give the lord a mighty clap he is a wonderful god a wonderful savior the king of kings and the lord of lords we thank you father in Jesus name and all of us say amen amen let's appreciate the Lord as we appreciate this team even for the great work they have done please let's uh, have our seats in the presence of the Lord and uh, may we be blessed because of coming yes there is a song that says we will be blessed because we came tell your neighbor you'll be blessed because you came you'll be blessed because you came yes even as we gather may we be blessed because we came amen i want to continue with part two of uh, our message the shield of faith the shield of faith and that is where we left yesterday night and i believe the lord ministered to your heart by understanding that every believer is in an unending battle and as long as you are in this body as long as you are in this tent you will always be in constant battle 
and uh, because the enemy the devil and his forces are always attacking and fighting you so even it's not just battle you see when we just talk of battles we may feel discouraged but we can put it better every believer we are moving not just from one battle to another but from one victory to another so whatever battle comes it is an opportunity for us to stand and manifest the victory of God so for you who is going through a battle God has given you an opportunity that he may display victory even through your life and that is why we cannot be discouraged that is why we cannot give up because we know whom we have believed in and we know know something that in Christ Jesus we are more than conquerors so every battle that is coming we can tell it before you came God knew that you will come and God knew that I will be able to overcome this battle as the Bible says no temptation that has befallen you that is not common unto man but God is faithful even in your temptation God is faithful even whatever you are going through it is common to man and God is faithful he will not let he will not allow you to be tempted beyond that which you have the ability to bear so if you are going through a battle God had weighed it God had taken measure of it and he had taken measure of you and he had said you can be able to overcome that battle do not listen to the lies of the devil you are well able praise the Lord somebody say I am well able yes God knows I am well able even if the battle seems to be so great according to God I am well able and the Bible says he will not suffer that you may be tempted beyond your power to bear and in all these things he will make for you a way of escape that you may stand over it and that is why whatever I am going through one of these days by the grace of God I will be standing over it amen i will stand over what i am going through what is happening will be my footstool by the grace of god so when we understand that and when we understand our weapons the weapons of our warfare which are mighty through god then we will be able to employ them and appropriate them for the sake of of our victory and that is why we are talking about the shield of faith any time that you have the battle the shield is your covering it protects you against the the, the darts of the enemy and it also extinguishes the fiery darts and we said about when we come together how we join our our faith together the shield of my brother can shield me on one area on another area and tonight as we talk about the the shield of faith and we said uh, faith is not faith if it is not based on the word of god and i, I want to let you know very clearly that Faith can only be faith if they are raised, if it is founded on the word of God. Anything except what God says, it's not faith. Praise the Lord. And please know that even if you have faith that you will make it, that you will rise to a higher level, if it is not founded on the word, it's not faith it's not faith it can only be faith if the foundation if the platform it is built on it is the word of god and that is why god is committed 
even to fulfill his word. There is no other business that God has. God is looking. He is watching over his word that he may fulfill it. And he fulfills it when he finds a person who has faith in God. And that is why Jesus said, have faith in God. It must be in the word of God. And today, as we share part two of the message, the shield of faith, we said, according to what the Bible says in verse 16 of uh, Ephesians 6, that having done all, take up the shield of faith with which you shall be able to quench or to extinguish the fiery darts of the enemy. Now, I want to now introduce you to the fiery darts. The Bible does not talk of one. So we must understand what are these arrows? What are the arrows in the hands of the enemy that are actually always directed against believers? Because every Every believer here, including me, and including the church of Jesus Christ in the whole world, as believers, the Bible is saying, faith will stop, faith will extinguish, faith will put off the fiery darts of the enemy. Which are these darts? Can we be able to know the darts that the enemy is directing against your life. Not one, not two, but according to the word of God, as we share this, I want you to know what these darts are and how the enemy uses them when the enemy shoots these darts. Because the enemy will not shoot all of them together. The enemy is cunning. The enemy will always will lay us when we may not be supposing that he is attacking and then he will throw a dart in your life and that dart is targeted before you know that you are acting on this dart he may throw another another dart and i want to show you i want you to understand the dart that the enemy uses and how to overcome them so that when he throws that dart you can always now get the shield of faith because every dart if it will not pierce you if it will not cause you to burn up it must be deflected through the shield of faith so part two of my message it is the shield of faith. And I am discussing or we are learning about understanding the fiery darts of the enemy and how to overcome them. Understanding the fiery darts of the enemy and how to overcome them. That is what I want to show you now. After understanding about faith, I want to introduce to you the various darts the enemy may be using, may keep on using, he has used in the lives of many. And those darts, when someone is not aware, the enemy has managed to attack the believers. So, and the first dart that I want us to discuss, I touched it on Sunday, but today I want to now Discuss it, discuss it in details. It is the dart of fear. The fiery dart or dart of fear. The dart of fear. And let me say, if there is a weapon, and I am saying that fear is an effective tool in the hands of the enemy, to paralyze faith and confidence in God and his word. Fear in the hands of the enemy 
is an effective tool. The devil has used fear effectively in the lives of many people. It is an effective tool in the hands of the enemy, number one, to paralyze your faith and your confidence in God and his word. That is what the devil uses fear to do. He uses fear to paralyze you because fear paralyzes a person. When somebody is afraid, they become paralyzed. They lose confidence. They lose faith. And that is why fear always attacks faith. And even faith is believing in God and his word. But fear is also believing in things that are negative. Fear is faith in the negative. Because when somebody is fearful, they are believing. If you are afraid of coronavirus, you are believing that coronavirus will kill you. If you are afraid that you may be attacked by robbers, you have faith in the negative. So when we are talking of fear, God engages us through, fee, through faith. The enemy engages people through fear. And that is why in the kingdom of God, we operate by faith. In the kingdom of the devil or the wicked one, it operates by fear. The devil operates through fear. And that is why when the word of God says do not be afraid and the many instances that God says do not be afraid and have faith in God it is saying that let your confidence be in God but the devil when he uses fear he makes you to have confidence in something that is negative and not God and did you know when it comes to fear as I have said, the same strength we used to have faith in God, it is the same energy we have fear or faith in the negative. Fear, we have said it is faith in the negative things. And there are many people that when it comes to having faith in the negative things, they will have great faith in all the negative things of this life and even when we come and teach them the word of god they cannot be able to translate or they cannot be able to relocate to change their position in god let me illustrate by saying there are many people here who believe in bad things more than they believe in good things. They believe in curses following them. They have so much faith in curses, in witchcraft, more than they have faith in the word that says, and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. No matter how much you preach to them, that if you obey the Lord, these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. Even having seen people blessed and having read the word of God, they will not believe as much as they believe that their grandmother, who they have never seen, left a curse. They have such faith in the negative. And that is why even when we are being taken to the traditional gods, it is through fear. Because you are told, you know in this family that there were things that were happening. Your grandfather said, your grandmother, your mother said, and now through fear in the bad occurrences of not doing what they said, you have so much faith that if you do that, the evil will not happen 
But you come to these people and they come into the church and you begin telling them, brethren, God who called Abraham, he prospered him. He increased him. He made him to be great. And I want to tell you, God, he has good thoughts over your life. They will nod. They will write points. But when it comes to practical faith, they have faith in the bad things more than in the good things. Amen. And that is how now many people, the enemy operates that way. There are many people even here who have so much faith in bad things happening. They always see themselves. At Akilala, they are afraid. They always see themselves actually bad things happening. Your child being knocked down by a car. You always have a lot of fear. But when we come to the word of God, you find you keep on preaching and when somebody goes through a challenge, they are, instead of having faith in God and his word, they actually gravitate to faith in things not working. Rather than having faith in things working and being blessed and rising higher, they will always go back and go to the other side. I have faith that I may serve God and not be blessed. I have, and that is fear now. And the enemy operates through fear. Let me say that the dictionary says that fear is a thought that something unpleasant will happen. That is how the dictionary defines it. I've just gotten it directly without changing or adding meaning unto it. Fear is a thought. So we can say fear begins in the mind. If somebody will operate in fear or will do things in the natural, in the physical realm, before they do those things, that fear must have originated in their minds. It actually settles, resides as a thought. You begin thinking that something unpleasant will happen. That is fear. Nime shiria. Kanan uwaya nire shiria oreo the ate odomoru wahata wekeka. Something you even don't know. But you may be in the house, you may just be there, but you are afraid that something bad may happen. And that is what now the devil will use. Not only bad things, the devil uses fear as a thought that what you believe may not happen. That what God has said may not be true. That what you are confessing that this kingdom, that even heaven, it is something that people teach and yet they have not been there. And the devil now creates thoughts that unpleasant things may, not, may happen to us. And the good things may not happen even in our lives. But I want to let you know, every person, including you and including everyone, Everyone has his own fears. And how one deals with his fear determines whether the enemy will succeed in his mission against them. Let me say it again. Everybody has got their fears to deal with. Everybody will be afraid for some reason. Some things will come and everybody has got fears. And how you deal with your fear, how you respond to the things you are afraid of, be they 
personal, be they financial, be they eternal, be they in your business, be they, no matter what it is, how one deals with his fears determines whether the enemy will succeed in his mission against that person. So how you deal with your fear? As a fiery dart. And that is why the devil will shoot an arrow. And it is in your mind a thought that something bad will happen. That is a dart now. You are here believing the word of God. The devil throws a dart in your mind. A thought. And you, how you deal now with what you are thinking now. With I may serve God. And fail that my children may never become great. How you deal with that thought now determines how whether the enemy will succeed in his mission against you. Now, what are you afraid of? What are your fears right now? Even as we share, somebody is afraid. Oh, I, I, I may not be married. Somebody may be afraid. This marriage will fail. Somebody may be afraid. This ministry may not succeed. That this and this may happen now. That is a dart in your mind. The devil has already shot that dart of fear. And now, how do you respond to that fear? If you look at the Bible, in the book of Psalm. Chapter number 34, verse 4. Psalm 34, verse number 4. Let's see what the word of God says. Look at this. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and he delivered me from all my fears. This was David who was saying, I am a, a, a man who is afraid. I am a man who is full of fear. Every time David was fearing that Saul would kill him one day. David was fearing that he may not be able to overcome the Philistines. But the Bible is saying in his life there were many instances when he was afraid. But he says as a confession, I sought the Lord and he delivered me from all my fears. So not one thing I was afraid of, I was afraid of many things. But what I did, I took my fears to the Lord. I never allowed my fears to guide me and I never directed my fears anywhere but I took my fears to the Lord kwa hivyo kila mtu kuna mambo atapitia na ataona yatakayoleta hofu ama uoga katika maisha yako I was afraid you are afraid of many things and that now when people are so much afraid, the devil now knows. I, I, I will just lay a foundation and I will show you five things what fear gives birth to. I'm not sharing that today. I will do that tomorrow. Today I just want to go deeper on fear. But I will show you when the devil manages to get you afraid, that fear it is like pregnancy and it will give birth to other things in your life to other darts and the enemy will always defeat you but the origin but the beginning of all the attacks it was fear in your life and David was saying I was afraid but I, I sought the Lord Maybe in prayer, I sought the Lord. He heard me and he delivered me from all my fears. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. By this time he is saying I will fear no evil. He has 
committed all his fears and the Lord has delivered him so that wherever he goes even if there is a reason to be afraid he cannot be afraid because Jehovah has delivered him from all his fears may God deliver you as he delivered David from all his fears in life yeah the fear of death you know the Bible says and he is able to deliver those who have been held captive by the fear of death everybody is afraid I am boarding this matatu always afraid of death many fears and if you look at the Bible in the book of Psalm 56 verse 3 Psalm 56 verse 3 God delivered David from all his fears. Psalm 56 verse 3. Look at what David was saying. Whenever I am afraid, I will put my trust in you. So this man is a man many times he will be afraid. At the real the day together. Whenever I am afraid, when I look at my children and I am afraid, when I look at coronavirus and I am afraid, I will not fix my thoughts on the bad things happening. I will trust in the Lord. So if you will overcome your fears, you must turn them to the Lord in prayer and you must trust in the Lord. He said, I sought the Lord. He turned his fears. At the, like now, everybody is afraid when coronavirus came and everybody was afraid we would die in Africa. But the Bible says, things to make you afraid will come. Now, kama hamujapata, if you thought coronavirus is the greatest thing, watch, maybe in your personal life, there will come things that will make you afraid. But David said, whenever I am afraid. So that is not once or twice or thrice. No, really, the day you are together. When I see Goliath and everybody is going back to the cave, running away from the Goliath, David would say, even though I see how big, how gigantic he is, a mammoth of a man even though i am afraid i don't go back i put my trust in thee so every one of us you will have your fears to face and i i want to show you now this is david as you understand fear as a fiery dart of the enemy natumesema shetani aki succeed na kukuingiza uoga ama hofu and you are now afraid there will be other things that will be bathed through that fear but I want to show you how people face their fears in life three ways how people face their fears in life Three ways how people face their fears in life. And you will be, in one way or the other, you may be oscillating from one way of facing the fear to another. Number one, how people face their fears, it is through flight or fleeing, running away. Anytime they are afraid, they flee. Flight is the one way. That is why if something like even an animal gets in here and it is about to attack us, and even if it may not be ferocious or dangerous, you would see the first instinct when you are afraid, it is survival. Or the fittest and you would pray that god enhance my feet that i may run like a deer so one way 
how people face their fears. It is, I'm afraid of people, so I keep off people. I run away from people. You keep on running, and let me tell you, in this life, you cannot run forever. One day, your fears will catch up with you. Even if you are afraid of criticism, of rejection, anytime you, you see some battles, you run away, you may go to another place, you, 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 you are running away from challenges in the house between a husband and a wife, I want to tell you, you will not avoid them forever. You cannot run away for, forever. Even in the ministry, you may try, but you cannot run away forever. You can't hide. So I am telling you, many of us, we have overcome our fear because we know how to run away. And if you are here, and there are many things you are afraid of, and you succeed by running away. I want to tell you, modo wa tengeraga. Na warugaga ni yekagatea, ya tofokaga. Heri muoga kora, you are not as fast as you can. And what you have been running away from, it has been running towards you. Kile unatoroka, Bado kina kufuata. So, if you will face your fear, you can't keep on running forever. And I am telling you again, what you are running away from, it is still running after you. And so you must make up your mind, how long and how far can you run? It is still running after you. Number two, how people face their fears, it is through fighting, confronting, facing their fears. You don't run away. Or after running away, you reach a point, you face what is facing you. Fighting means facing what is facing you. You say, I will not fear again. No, I am afraid but I will not run anymore. Fighting. It's a good way. And let me tell you what you flee from, you cannot conquer. Whatever you keep on running away from, what you flee from, you cannot conquer it. You will not conquer by fleeing from it. You will conquer many of the battles. As long as the Israelites, with Saul, every day for 40 days, they were seeing Goliath emerge from the cave. And everybody would flee into the cave. As long as they were fleeing, they were deferring the battles of today to tomorrow. Praise the Lord. Wakati wa wote, ikaisha siku arubaini, wange fight na yeye the first day, but now, the battle that would have been won the first day, it has been taken to the second day, na second day mtu wanatoroka, and the third day, and what you keep on fleeing from, you are deferring it, you are postponing it into the future. Na mudhenyo omwe, ke uroli da, future ine no gikara huka. And most of the times, it will face you when you are not that strong. Some of the people have ran away from what they should face when they are young. Some of the things you should face now, some of the challenges, some of the battles you should face right now, you may be fleeing them. But I want to tell you, the Bible says it is good for a person to bear their yoke when they are young. You don't run away. You can't keep on running away forever. Timothy was so timid. But there was a time that now Paul had to be taken away. And he had now to be told, 
Do not allow anyone to despise you. It is time now to face what you have been fearing. And that is why I'm telling you, as long as the children of Israel were fleeing, Goliath was still there. Goliath did not go away because they fled. Even if you flee, he will still be there. But only when there was a person called David, when he said, I will face and I will fight that which you have been fleeing. Maybe your parents, they fled many things. Maybe in your family, you have people fleeing, fleeing and fleeing. Nobody faces the enemy. It is time that you be like David. You receive the anointing of David and you say, I will not run away as these people. I will stand and I will face what they have been fleeing from. And I am declaring to somebody, may you receive the anointing of David that whatever others have been fleeing from, you are getting the grace to face it by the power of God. Amen. David said, I will not run away. And that is why you will never conquer what you cannot face. There are many people, even here, you don't face some of your personal issues, personal attitudes. You hide them. You can hide it around a mask that you put. But there are even some issues some behaviors that you are fleeing from that you are hiding you are ignoring and you don't want to face them maybe you have anger maybe you have issues in your own personal life and you God has been speaking to you but you have been fleeing you don't want any pastor who preaches those things you flee you can flee a church but you have not fled from what has been following you. Yes, you can keep on fleeing. You can flee a marriage. But it has to, you have not fled from what should have been faced. And that is why David said, I will arise and I will face. So number two thing, you must face by fighting. But I want to tell you, even as you fight, Every human power is limited. And that is why you can fight up to some level. Because every human power is limited. So even the things that you know that you can fight, don't you know that the Bible says one day, the same David who killed Goliath, the same David who killed lions and bears, one day they went to battle and he was unable to fight. And Ishbi Benob, the brother of Goliath, they saw that David cannot be able to fight as he was. He is not as strong. He could not now throw the javelin. He could not now swing the, what do you, do you call that thing? That, that, that he used. What do we call it? Yeah, the sling. He could not swing it as he did it when he was a young man. And when he was about to be attacked by Ish Bibenob, the Bible says the son of Zeruiah, Abishai, he saw, he protected David, and they told him, From today, you will never go with us again to the battle. You are the lamp and the light of Israel. If you die, if you are killed, the light will go off. Allow us to go, but not you. That is why I'm telling you, human power, every human is limited. And that should be understood. Every human is limited to some extent. And for the Bible says in the book of, uh, is it in the book of First Samuel? Chapter number 1, no, chapter number 2, verse 9. First Samuel chapter number 2, verse 9. For by strength no man shall prevail. So even if you are strong today, 
as you face your fears you can flee but today you can fight but i want to tell you not forever for by strength no man shall prevail but number three how you face your fears number three how people face their fears it is through faith and that is the best way of facing your fears not just fleeing and fighting but through faith that way how people face their fears because as long as you flee you cannot flee forever when you are fighting you will not be strong forever but even as you fight you must fight combined with faith so that you can you be strong in the lord and taking up the whole armor of god so number three it is through faith and when we say through faith faith as a way of facing your fears it is seeing your situation through god and not seeing god through your situation faith when you are facing your fears through faith it is seeing your situation through god and not seeing god through your situation i don't know whether you're understanding that how you face your fears whatever you are afraid of you don't see it or you don't see god through that thing you see that thing through god now let me say something when we were boys we used to get some papers that were colored and uh, maybe a yellow or a red one i also see it with my boys and they put it uh before them and they will look to you and everything seems red because of the kind of the lenses that you have and that is why in this life when we see god through our situations you put your situation here and now you want to see god through your situation you will be afraid because what you focus is the situation and you are seeing god through your situation but faith it is seeing the situation you put god here and now you see the situation by first of all seeing god so in this life the issue of fear and faith it is about the kind of lenses you have put so one thing i want to tell every one of us change your lenses Praise the Lord. Tell your neighbor, change the lenses. You, your problem is not the situation. And it is not even God. The challenge you have, it is that you are trying to understand God. You are trying to see God through your situation. But you should see your situation through God. And that is why when David was going to face Goliath, look at what Goliath was saying. Bring me a man that I may fight with him. If you overcome us, we'll become your servants. And if I overcome him, you will become our servants. And everybody, they saw Goliath and then they looked at their God. And so what happened? They lenses where they saw their God through goliath they first saw goliath and then they saw god and as long as they first saw goliath and they saw god they were running away but look at how david saw goliath he came and he, he said when he had the report he said who is this philistine an uncircumcised Philistine defying the armies of, of the Lord. And he told Saul, my God will give me this man into my hands. He has done it through the lions and through the bears. And when even they met with Goliath, he said, you come to me with a javelin and with a spear, but I come to you. I am not seeing the spears. I'm not seeing the weapons. 
I am seeing you through my God. And he said to him, Today God will give you into my hands and I will strike you and I will cut your head and I will give your body as a carcass to the vultures. And that is what David did when he was marching. He was marching seeing Goliath through God. But Saul was seeing God through Goliath. So what I am saying from today, as you face a situation, face it through God. You see God first, you see what he can do, and you see what he has said. And whenever you do that, you will always overcome your fears. Praise the Lord. Change your lenses. Look at somebody and tell them your problem is your lenses. Yeah, the lenses you have put. You are seeing coronavirus. You are seeing God through coronavirus. Every time you talk about coronavirus more than God. But when we face the pandemic, we are facing it through God. Amen. That is the way to approach issues. Anytime you face your handicap. You face your challenges and you always see your challenges and you come now and see God. That is not the way. Even when you come to pray, don't just pray about those needs, crying about those needs. See, the, see God through no, see those needs through God by saying, I know my God. He is the supplier. He will provide. Even though I am going through this, weeping only endures for a night. But joy comes in the morning. So you are confessing. You are addressing your situations through God. Not talking about your God through your situations. mambo. Makari ya Nope. You will never walk, overcome. You discuss negativity. And then you just say, Father, we trust you. Now, these people have been demoralized. But when you have people, and by the way, did you know, whenever the Israelites were to go to battle, no matter the army, the first thing, they would not hear the words of the commander. They were to go to the priest. Why? Whenever the Israelites were to go to battle, God had said, never go to battle because you have weapons. Never go to battle because you have a great army. Never go to battle because the army is so small that you are attacking. The first place you the first person you should listen to it is the priest why the priest that the priest may come and speak the name of the lord upon them the greatness of their god so that whenever they are going to face the enemy they may see the enemy through the god the preacher or the priest had spoken to them amen never face your battle because you are strong david faced Goriath because he could see God. That is why even the, the three young men, they were not afraid of the fire. They never ran away. Nope. They never fought the king, but they had faith. And faith helps you to stand your ground. Faith will always help you to stand your ground. You are not afraid. You face it. You say, I know. I know these are lions, but I can see the lions through my God. I know this is coronavirus. I know what it has devastated, how it has devastated nations. I know how people have died. I'm not ignoring, but one thing I want to say, I will not elevate it beyond my God. I will talk of God. And that is why people have been filled with a lot of fear because of what has been spoken until they don't see God as able to deliver them. But from today, face your fears through faith. Don't flee. You can't flee forever. Don't, don't just fight. Fight and be strong in the Lord. But the most important way, have faith in God. And let me finish by saying this. The next two minutes 
or three minutes. When you now use the shield of faith to face your fears, what are you saying? That now, I know it is something dangerous. I know the devil has defeated others, but I have the shield of faith and I am not retreating. When you have the shield, you don't run away because the shield will always Every dart that is drawn, it will always be extinguished. Now, when you use the faith or the shield of faith, there are a few things I want you to know about faith that overcomes fear. Faith that overcomes fear, which is the dart of the enemy, it is built on few things. Your faith, this faith that you are saying, you stand on the ground of faith which will quench faith is built on these few things four things i will mention them very fast and we finish but before we mention them let's read the book of deuteronomy chapter number 31 verse 6 and up to verse 8 deuteronomy chapter number 36 that yeah 31 verse 6 Deuteronomy 31 verse 6 to verse 8 look at this be strong and of good courage do not fear nor be afraid of them for the Lord your God he is the one who goes with you he will not leave you nor forsake you verse 7 then Moses called Joshua and said to him in the sight of all Israel, Be strong and of good courage, for you must go with these people or with this people to the land which the Lord has sworn to their fathers to give them, and you shall cause them to inherit it. And verse 8, he said, And the Lord, he is the one. The Lord, he is the one who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Do not fear. Look at how many times the Bible has talked about fear. Do not fear. Why? Because of the Lord. In the book of Joshua 1 verse 9. Joshua chapter 1 verse 9. Now God himself. After speaking to Moses, then Moses spoke to Joshua. And God now spoke to Joshua and he told Joshua, Have I not, is it not I? Is it not I who have commanded you? Have I not commanded you? Brethren, when it comes to not fearing, it is a command to God. It is not something God is requesting you. Joshua was told, have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage, and have I not commanded you, do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you will go. Have I not commanded you? Now, the enemy will strike with fear. You will go and face seven great nations. When you see their weapons, when you see their army, when you see their strategies, you will be afraid. But I want you to know, I have commanded you, even what you will ever see, never be afraid. Remember what I said. Amen. Even, no matter, Joshua, Dari Arabiria Bara, Joshua has been left, but God is telling him, from today, you will see many things, you will hear many things, which will make you to be afraid, which will paralyze you. But I have commanded you from today, do not be afraid of what you will see, or what you will hear, or go through. I have commanded you. And now listen, that faith, which is the shield that will overcome fear, it must be built on some few things here about God. And this faith must only be built on God. Number one, your faith must be built on his person. 
his person, the person of God. Not on a man. Your faith should not just be founded on you. It's not in you. His person, because the Lord said, I the Lord. That means your faith must be founded on who you believe in. That means who you believe in. The, his person. Joshua was being told, it is the Lord who has said it. It is the Lord who goes before you. So if you have the faith, faith must be built on his person. Number two, your faith must be built on his promise. Not just his person. I know the person. I know. Your faith is in the person. I know whom I have believed in. And even the three Hebrews, they told Nebuchadnezzar, we know our God. So, your faith that will overcome that fear, no koriru, it is built and based on God. I know him. Number two, we have said, it must be built on his promise. His promise means what he has said. His person is who he is. His promise is what he has said. It is impossible for God to lie. And that have I not commanded you? God spoke to Joshua. And Joshua, his faith that would overcome the fear must be based. Anytime you are about to be afraid, you remember who you believe in. You remember what he has said. Amen. Anytime you are going through a challenge, remember who you believe in. And number two, you remember what he has said. And when you are in that situation and you remember who and you remember what he has said, then you face your situation and say, I know. I know whom I believe in. I know what he has said. And it is impossible for God to lie. He's not a son of man. That he should lie. Neither son of a man. That he should repent or change his mind. He is God. He is faithful. He is watching over his word to fulfill it. Number three. Your faith is not just based on who he is. And it is not just based on what he has said. Number three. Your faith that overcomes the fear which is a fiery dart of the enemy, it must be built on his presence with you. His presence with you. Number three, it is his presence. That means wherever you go, he has, he will be with you. Wherever you go, wherever you will find yourself, your faith must be based on his presence. Ationaigegerera, David was saying, even though I go through the valley of the shadow of death, thou art with me. And that is why he told Joshua, wherever you will go, I will be with you. Is it not God who is going before you? His presence. Whenever you are afraid, remember who is with you. Jesus told his disciples, behold, I am with you. To the very end of ages. I will never leave you. Nor forsake you. Brethren. Even if you are in that thing. And you seem to be afraid. He has said. I will get with you in it. I will not leave you. I will not fail you. I will not forsake you. So you can have faith. He is with me. Somebody say he is with me. Oh you can say better. Say he is with me. Because I know he is with me, my faith can rest. Number four, the last thing. Your faith must not only be built on his person, who he is, on his promise, what he has said, on his presence, wherever you go, he will never leave you nor forsake you, but your faith must be built on his power, what he can do. His power is what he can do. This is the faith 
that will quench the fiery darts of the enemy. I know my God. I know whom I have believed in and I know he is able. God is able. If he has said it, he has all the power. So, faith that overcomes, no, the shield of faith which overcomes the fiery darts of the enemy is built on his person, who he is, on his promise, on his presence with you, and on his power. And that is why, if you know whom you believe in, if you know what he has said, and he cannot change his mind, he was not lying to you. If you know he has said he will never leave you, nor forsake you, your husband may go, your pastor may go, your best friend may go, but you can have faith that God will not go, will not go after them or with them, and you can always rest in his power. He has all the power, and therefore, even if I will be afraid, David said, whenever I am afraid, I will trust in you. I will trust in your person, who you are. I will trust in your promise. I will trust in your presence with me. And I will trust in your power. Brethren, trust in the Lord. That is the shield of faith that overcomes or that quenches the fiery dart of fear. Tomorrow, we do part three. God bless you. Give the Lord a mighty clap. Oh, you can give the Lord a mighty clap.